And we are live, Leopoldo, my friend. How are you? Hey, man. What's up? I'm very good today, and it's, uh, I'm very glad to be here. Need and a professional how are you doing? I created one for oh, our startup. I can hear the, <laughs> the commercial. Let me show you how I did it. You see, that's what First I was telling you when, uh, when, uh, when I told you that you know we need to test and everything because there's always. Oh something. yeah, yeah, of course. And I, yeah, the, yeah, of this course. time I thought that I was ready, that I did everything, and instead I forgot to switch, uh, switch off the audio. But anyway, give me just a couple of seconds to make sure that people at home can hear us. Uh, okay. I don't know. If anyone is watching, please leave a comment. Let me know that, you're, uh, that you can hear us, if you can hear me, if you can hear Danjuts. Give it yeah, a we're here and we're waiting. Yeah, hopefully people will be able to to hear us and to see us in the right way, in the proper way. So Nicolo Lombardi says hello. I guess that he can hear us. Yeah. We can hear you, Stefano Marozzi. All right, all right. Fantastic. Uh, good, good enough. Okay. Leopoldo, should we just call you Danjuts because this is your art name and that's what you who you go for on social media yeah i mean yeah i mean you can call me danjuts or i mean you you never know how people from usa or uk like pronounce it like they say weird stuff like dangus danguis <laughs> like it's it's always insane for me man <laughs> yeah, you can call me leo like up to you really i don't mind as long as you refer to I, me let's I leave it always really let's leave it up. to danjuts so that when you're famous okay at least people know <laughs> how to call you, all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Oh, Massimiliano Napoli says hello. All good, guys. Do you know Massimiliano? I guess you do, right? Uh, he's Max from Diorama, right? Yes. He's Massi. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, I know him. I just didn't know his surname first. It's, it's so funny that, uh, that in the high-end sphere of, like, architectural visualization in Italy, more or less, all the people that I get in touch with who are very, very talented, they're connected also from a professional point of view. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, for me, it's an honor that you speak like this way about me because I'm just getting started with all this world, all, all this stuff. So it's for me like an honor to work with such people like Massimiliano and all the Diorama group. Like, they are all super talented, like insanely uh people with insane knowledge like it's for me it's an honor to be with them and work with them it's it's funny that you say that you just got started because like if i look at your work it's it's absolutely stunning and we'll get to it in a second but actually thanks man. don't don't let me do the talking i want you to do the talking try and explain to me in two minutes who you are and what you do so that people can catch up Okay, so basically, uh, my name is Leopoldo D'Angelo. I am 24 years old, uh, soon to be 25 in July. And I started like my career like mm, 10 years ago, maybe in high school when I was like doing stuff in Photoshop and all that kind of stuff. So after my diploma, I've uh, started to doing 3D. And yeah, I, I started instantly being in love with it. And I decided to go to go further to to swim through and yeah I'm I hope I can make improvements you know I hope I have room for improvement and like working with such people it's for me challenging and and yeah I love it and I'm here basically and it's let an me, honor for me to be me here just again. Show a little bit of your work to, to yeah the sure at home. thanks. Um. I'm currently on Living Legend on your Behance, and actually, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys are on Behance or also uh, Instagram, look up Danjuts and give him a follow because this guy is just amazing. Now, before <laughs> I start, so to say, criticizing your work, just not because yeah. I want to criticize you. I think that you're very good. Absolutely. But you know, we could have an element of discussion by starting a little bit of criticism. I want you to a little bit expand on your work. What is it that you do that you like doing, especially on your own uh, time? And, you know, like, um, what are the things that you like doing when working in 3D? 
uh, basically, uh, I think my strongest points, which also are my favorite things to do, uh, it's uh, lighting and like uh, spending time compositing scenes, like um, position elements in a certain way, try different uh, setups and materials. I also enjoy doing shaders, like trying different stuff. Like it doesn't have to look like realistic or something. It just has to look cool, in my opinion. You know, like if 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 something looks cool, uh, I like it that way, and I like it to keep it that way. Then, of course, there might be room for improvement, as in it, it could be more realistic. And yeah, but if I'm happy with something, I always try to raise the bar and like uh, keep it, like bring it farther, bring it next level. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's it. Now, I might, you know, criticize your work by saying yeah. that what you do is just another uh, cyberpunk type of art. Yeah. How would you defend your art to a comment like mine? Uh, I don't know. I will try to maybe point out some technicism. Is, is technicism a word in English? Uh, technicalities, um, rather. Yeah, technicalities. I would like to point out some technicalities in my work and maybe uh, challenge the person to do the same. Why not? I, you know, I'm saying this because eventually, uh, at the moment, it seems like uh, cyberpunk and all that kind of like flashy Neo Tokyo uh, artwork yeah. seems to be very trendy. However, when I was yeah. going through your work, I realized that there is a very cinematic, a very good cinematic quality to your work, like the angles that you were choosing, the compositions, yeah. the way you play with light, you know, that you really know how to shape uh, spaces with light. Like some images, they really reminded me a little bit of the early work of also Sid Med, you know, Sid Med? The, yeah. The... yeah, yeah, I know. He, he passed away like a few months ago, sadly. Yeah. Yeah, and so you I know, know him, like, and uh, yeah. The 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 reason why I was saying this is because you know, like it's very easy to get confused and say, "Oh, that's another cyberpunk work." But actually, I think there is a di a, a deeper degree of depth, <laughs> and I'm playing a lot yeah. with words. Okay, with your yeah, work. I appreciate that because it means like some my works kind of stands out like amongst all like other one thousand million renders and yeah because it, I think it's common to be like uh, kind of attracted by this kind of work because as you say they look flashy they look very nice like it's it's easy for somebody to say oh I like that but yeah I think it's harder to stand out amongst these people because. Yeah, as you said, a lot of people do this and it's an honor for me that you say this about my work because it's my work, you know. And yeah, so I, I, I will try, as I say, to keep it uh, even far, like to bring it even farther, to take it to the next level, as you say, like, yeah. Uh, T Stefano says that technicism is a word. Okay, I, I apologize. Um, oh, Fabian is also watching. Hey, what's up? The Dizzy Viper. Is, uh, oh, what's up, man? How are you doing? You know, you Fa doing? Fabian is a super easygoing, super fun guy. Last year, we invited him in to Vienna for the modeling battle that we do at the D2 oh, conference. Okay. And yeah. so the modeling battle, it's a, it's a game that we play. We have two artists on stage and we give them shots of beer and shots of vodka. And oh, okay. They have to model something as they do that. And so. Oh, sounds very nice. This year I decided to participate as well, meaning that I was like uh, doing all the uh, hosting of the competition. Yeah. But I was also drinking. And so every time that they had to drink, I was also drinking. Okay, the, okay. The competition <laughs> lasts, I think, 25 minutes. It's very short. And okay. I think that by minute 13, we were so drunk, right? Ah, like, I could I not stand, stand uh, still. Yeah. Uh, it was crazy. And so I go to turn to to, um, to Fabian, and I'm like, Fabian, how's it going? And he looks at me with the eyes of a little kid, and he says, I never had so much fun in my life. <laughs> ah, that's so good, man. 
I mean, I would like to try such a thing too, but before I have to get good at two things. And the first one is modeling, because as I said, like currently I'm not really good at modeling. I often download assets from the internet. I buy assets and such. And the second thing I have to get good at drinking because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not really, so yeah. So let's, yeah, there's that. okay, since you mentioned this, let's talk a little bit about your workflow. How do you produce yeah. 3D images? What are the softwares? What are the the, uh, the things that you do when you create an image? And feel free to start from, you know, like uh, the formulation of an idea. You can talk about everything that you think it's relevant. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, first of all, it comes inspiration. Like, I try to get inspired, for, like, from literally anything. Like, it could be movies, could be songs, could be, like, images from someone else, from other artists, or could be anything, really. And... Yeah, the second is like maybe I try to like make it mine. You know, I don't want to copy someone else. Maybe like I get inspired, but I, I never try to replicate someone else's work. And uh, yeah, so I try to like make it going, like to make it happen, like maybe positioning stuff. Like maybe I see a certain building and I say, I don't know, do I want it to make it like similar, like make it completely different? Do I want to keep this building? Uh, or I don't need it at all. So yeah, I try different stuff. For me, it starts from the composition. And yeah, I composite stuff first and then comes lighting and then the materials because I've learned my way that uh, you, you can have like perfect materials. Maybe you can have really good materials, but if you don't have a uh, good lighting, like they don't show up. They don't like, you don't have a really visual justice. We could call it for those, uh, how can I say, uh, for those materials. So yeah, it comes from me. And then I try to comp, like to experiment different stuff. Like, um, I don't know, maybe I end up doing something else. Like, I don't know, maybe I see something in my work that inspires me and I say, okay, I abandon the, the primordial idea and I keep going with something else. Like I try, maybe I try different light. Like maybe my first idea was to make a, typical blue cyberpunk render but then i see in an orange light this works too like i like this and so yeah i keep going with that like it's all i, I think it happens to everyone like that makes renders like i don't know maybe dz that hearing us like maybe he can confirm but yeah this is my workflow and then i post produce the whole thing in photoshop okay good and your main platform once again in case you know uh, people missed it is Cinema 4D, right? Yeah, I use Cinema 4D to work in 3D and I use Octane Render to render the whole thing. But I think like uh, these are just tools because if we're talking like technical only, I think if you'll get good at something like at one 3D software, I think more or less like um, besides learning the UX and user interfaces and stuff like that, I think more or less you're getting good at every software. I'm currently learning Blender. That's how, that's like awesome. I, I love Blender. I, I can't wait to test it out. And I think I, I know like 70% of my uh, 3D knowledge, like 3D people I know, like they are really jumping on Blender because it's, it's, it's really insane in my opinion. And they made so, so, I've so heard good stuff. A couple of people talking from, um, from the industry saying that at the moment, a lot of like rendering companies are rushing to create very stable and very uh, finished rendering plugins for Blender because in yeah. the past two years, a lot of users from uh, both 3ds Max and Cinema 4D, they have left the platform to go to Blender. And so, of course, you know, for companies like Octane, Corona, V-Ray, these are customers yeah. that are leaving. And you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's it's enough for a company to have a pl uh, a pipeline based on a software like say V-Ray to being able to switch yeah. the modeling Absolutely. software, but then you need to have the uh, production set for V-Ray. So I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting what the future has for us. Uh, yeah, in absolutely. Our 3D programs, but anyway. Um, what are you currently like testing with different software? Is there something that you're uh, experimenting with, which you think that people should also do that, um, 
might give you an extra edge over the uh, competition, if you like? Uh, to be fair, I don't know, like I try to experiment a lot on my own, but I tend like to be channeled on the right direction from someone else, like someone that I uh, consider an expert or something like I have a lot of friends in the uh, motion designers community. Do you know them? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, I have a lot of friends there and like most of them are really talented and acknowledge people. And I ask them for like every maybe shortcoming I've got also to the Diorama guys. They help me a lot through every like. So, yeah, I try to get channeled in the right direction from them. And then maybe I try to experiment my own. Like maybe I find something that they don't know or I don't know. It, it could happen. Like it's such a big field, such a big industry, this one. So it will be anything that happens. And yeah, I like to ex experiment. Um, let me ask you, since you work also in the field of architecture visualization, and this is uh, one thing that you do, you know, to put food on the table, what are the yeah. main difficulties that you had to overcome to start working on architecture projects? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, it might uh, it might sound uh, weird, but uh, like the the sides of the scenes where I work on, it's really something that uh, shifted me off for a while. Like, because I wasn't used at all to work on such big projects. Like, uh, I am I used to work, like, super freely, almost real time in, in Octane, freely moving in the viewport with path tracing, uh, live viewer open and not a problem. While I have to, I had to learn to close the live, Redshift live viewer, Redshift is another thing I having trouble with, I mean, not trouble, but I'm having some difficulties to learning it and so on. And yeah, so I had to close the live viewer and starting uh, working the viewport and in the program itself, rather than fixing things that look, that show up in the live viewer only. So yeah, I'm learning a lot through these, thanks to the ArchViz, the architectural visualization uh, works that I'm doing. And are there like, um technical aspects that were difficult for you to learn that you had to learn working on architecture or was it actually not a big deal? Uh, I mean, um, as someone that mm, is not related to architecture at all, like I'm learning it now. So yeah, uh, even the learning, you know, like the names of the, the things basically, like I didn't know what, like I had, to, I had to learn it both in Italian and in English because like there are some words that I never heard of, like um, uh, the ownings, for example, like I, I never heard this word first. Which like, one? you know, those ownings, A-W-N-I-N-G-S. Ownings. No, I don't know this word. What is it? Uh, they're like... Um, uh, are you saying Italian tende? Aha, okay, drapes, curtains. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, the kind of curtains. Yeah, but uh, they are a different kind. So okay. I had to, I had to learn that as well. So yeah, names are also a part that uh, I had to learn. I had to dip into it, dig deep into it. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you. Hold on, there are some questions. Uh, the Dizzy Viper is actually asking, "Where are you from?" He says, I know that you're Italian, but where in Italy? Okay, so I'll let you answer that question. Okay, so I was born in Turin and Torino. I live my all my life here. And I sometimes go to Milan. Like before this COVID thing happened, I was often in, in Milan. And yeah, now I will see like when these things will be calmed down. Maybe I will be back in Milan. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, generally I'm in North Italy. Torino is such an amazing city. I've been there a couple of times in the over the past one year. Uh, it is really an amazing city, and there is a lot going on. I think that for an artist, is a it's a very nice place because it's not as expensive as Milan, um, but you can find a lot of inspiration. There are a lot of companies that are working out of Torino because of the proximity with France. You know, like uh, yeah, that's a lot true. Of, uh, companies that that also work yeah there. that's true uh but anyway and he says okay no it's not bolzano <laughs> yeah yeah i know it's from bolzano yeah i remember like when i met like the first time uh i i didn't met dizzy for like i have to 
uh, meet him in person like in the next maybe month or something we will have uh, the chance to meet and grab a beer together uh, like uh, when I first saw his work on Instagram like that was probably one year ago I saw he collaborated with another artist and he said like he stated he was an Italian 3D artist so I uh, spoke to him I contacted him directly and say oh yo man like in Italian and I saw he, he was like answering, yeah, in Italian, but like it was really, I saw like he wasn't really Italian. So oh, yeah, weird I, ah, Italian. Yeah, Bolzano. <laughs> yeah, 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 like he's from Bolzano. Now I get that. So yeah, I've come to know he's better. Like he's a really good guy and an insane artist. Love that's, this uh, work. That's, that's the thing, you know, like when I was a soldier, I did it in the, on the border together with like Austria. And so a lot yeah. of people were from those areas. And, uh, People were making a joke all the time that they say that they were fake Italians, you know? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah I know, right? <laughs> once you go away from Italy, you realize that it's that they're all the same, you know? They they just pretend yeah. not to be Italians. So, uh, so Fabian, if you're listening, you are Italian, and you're a proud Italian, my friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, I wanted yeah. to ask you something. Um, this might be a, a silly question for many. I noticed that you have tattoos on your face. Oh, yes. Uh. Now, I have to say, I have an incredible respect for those who don't care and they do whatever they like. And I think that, you know, okay. tattoos are a great expression of like uh, their own creativity. Uh, have you ever had issues with people like uh, judging you because of the way that you were expressing your creativity and i'm talking of course about the tattoos that you also have on your face uh okay first of all i don't think it's a silly question because actually a lot of people ask me this so basically if you're talking uh judgment about like standard people like uh standard life altogether like i think sometimes maybe uh uh like elder people like sometimes they see me and they oh my god look at this guy he's probably gonna mug us probably gonna uh, throw out a knife or something <laughs> no but but if you're talking uh like uh in the work like in the work industry uh nobody ever like told me stuff about my tattoos or my uh, uh, aspect or something i think in especially in our field in my field of work uh, i think people care more about uh, my portfolio and my skills rather than how i look like in the end what they care about is getting their delivery their work uh, the way they want it and they don't really care who is doing what and yeah so basically I can say that and yeah that's it that, that makes perfect sense to me it's just that you know like uh, I don't know I left Italy uh, around 20 years ago and I can yeah. say without the shadow of a doubt that if 20 years ago you had tattoos on your face people in Italy would have been like what the fuck um, yeah, I, think I, that get society, I get it. I get today. I think that society has changed quite a bit, though, since then. Um, yeah, has improved, we might say, I mean, I, for some reason. Yeah. To me, it's a question because you know I haven't been living in Italy for twenty years, and so I wouldn't know. You know, like uh, I don't know if people would still have a problem with that. Like, uh, I yeah, mean, I, I remember that the first tattoo that I got, and I was eighteen, I had to do it in a hidden place. Because people did not oh, want to see really? tattoos. And we're talking oh, okay, about okay. It. I mean, this kind of makes sense. Like when I was like uh, 16, like I couldn't know I was I would have been doing this job like back then. But yeah, I remember my parents telling me, uh, please don't like don't do tattoos in places that might uh, like might kick you out of, from a job, like might jinx your job. So yeah, I I know what you're talking about, but like in the end. Uh, let's say I, I managed to make it work even with face tattoos and such. I might do more in the future. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I will see. Now, let me ask you something, Dungeons. Uh, one of the works that really made me look at your profile was the, uh, the work titled No Justice, No Peace. Which oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to upload, but now I cannot see it. Hold on. 
Uh, yeah, it's it's not on Beyonce yet because I upload stuff from Beyonce like based on month. So like I made this one in June, so you will probably see it in July on Beyonce because I go by month by month. I wanted to ask you, did you get any backlash for posting this artwork? Did people get mad at you because of the political uh, statement that you made here? Uh, actually, uh, yes, I did. And it was kind of weird for me because like I thought we were all like uh, basically uh, going into the same like on the same direction. You know, I didn't thought like it, some people could be like against this artwork. Like besides, my goal wasn't to make it political, you know, like as you can see, all my artworks like have this kind of dystopian and like futuristic representation so basically i wanted to make my own dystopian and futuristic representation of what's happening in usa i mean uh, there are riots in the street there are basically looting happening in the shops so yeah basically this is a maybe over exaggerated um riot that i like to show up in my instagram piece in my render and yeah that's it like it it wasn't meant to be political at all. Like if someone thinks this show my political views or something, I think they have a problem with themselves. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's that. It's to me, you know, whatever it's happening and whatever political affiliation that you have, standing against a message of unity and like uh, human rights and equality, it shows a side of society that I think it's rotten. And I think that yeah. you know, artists have the responsibility to come together um, and show the world what is happening through their art. Because, you know, like one of the reasons why you are able to do what you do is because of your sensitivity and the way you look at things. And so yeah. I think that, you know, the work of an artist should be um should be appreciated for the fact that it shows what it's happening yeah. rather than criticized and uh you know like um being trashed because people don't agree with it because they you yeah. know like in their inside of them they they don't agree with the political statement or whatnot but anyway absolutely um, i hope that you know um uh, when the time will be there that we will look back and say hey you know what actually we were right and uh, yeah and you know society has evolved better yeah uh, yeah in a, yeah i know what you mean like i think so too and yeah actually i've had some people saying like uh, yeah i'm from usa i uh, i respect this point of view i like this artwork but please like uh uh, don't do politics ever because like uh, it's not what like what people follow you for but I mean like uh, I don't really ca care about people following me for X or Y reason like I express what I feel I express exactly. what's going on in the world yeah so exactly and yeah you know, I, like, I like that I think that there is a problem of rhetoric here because it's like People feel like they want to patronize you and tell you what to do, right? Uh, but yeah. when you create art, you're basically an entertainer. Um, yeah, and true. as an entertainer, you have your own right to say how you feel about things, to, to, to share your mind, to share your opinion. If people have a problem with that, you know, just ask them. Listen, Donald Trump was an entertainer. He was a TV person. Yeah. He's doing politics yeah. now. What the fuck yeah, are you talking about? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A few days ago, I was just speaking with a friend that like Donald Trump was an entertainer, and like he was uh, often in the WWE wrestling uh, <laughs> show. I mean, now now that guy is a president. Like, I mean something might be wrong that it's not my duty like it's not my goal to judge but something might be wrong maybe so yeah okay i see That's that it. there are a couple of questions or things that people are asking uh nicolo is asking how long do do this interview last I, usually i try to keep them around 45 minutes one hour um you know, I know that people don't have a very long attention span, and so I'm trying to make content that it's easy to digest, mainly like on the background when you guys are working, and so 
you know, I hope that this answers your question. So probably we're going to hang out for another 20 minutes, maybe. Um, let me see. The DZ Viper is saying, I think that the best art, though, it's art that wakes up emotions of whatever kind, negative or positive. I agree. Um, yeah. And eventually the reason why I put out my platform with the Together We Stand uh, challenge of last week is because of this reason. You know, artists, they have the ability to show um, a side of reality that um, can only be shown through sensitivity and through um, the abilities that an artist has. If people fail to understand that, it's not our fault as artists, it's probably that people yeah. don't have the intellectual tools to understand those things. And I do not mean mm -hmm. that as an offense, it's just the state of affair in which we are at the moment as a society. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely with you. And if I must, like, if I may add one thing, I'm also, uh, like, kind of against people who, like, bend vague on this, uh, like, every, every trend that comes out. Like, uh, in the past month, I've seen, like, a billion render about corona covid like i mean i get it everyone is against covid i don't think anybody likes covid like it's not a political view like i like that i don't like that like <laughs> of course everybody's against a virus right so what's the point in making like a billion renders against covid and such and like i get it let's make one render because it's trending and such like i'm totally fine but like pumping your numbers like based on trending things like make you look like a douche sometimes because it's you're you're blatantly showing that you are just in there for the numbers you're not yeah. you don't care about this stuff so the next day like if something that mm, someone that makes uh, 12 renders about corona uh, makes 12 renders about black lives matter like it shows that he cares like the equal way like you know what i'm saying like yes so yeah. i don't i don't like to express myself on everything that comes to the world i like to express myself about things that i feel and I feel that are important. So I think that says enough about my political view. But uh, I, I think that this shows into your work as well. And I think that this is one of the uh, hardest things to figure out as an artist. And you know, like... Yeah, probably. Uh, and I don't know, there is something about your personality also when we started to chat in the very beginning that shows me that you are really committed towards what you think it's right for yourself as an artist. And this doesn't have any political affiliation. It only has yeah. that God-given uh, purpose, so to say. And I'm not a yeah. religious person myself. And actually, purpose is one of the things that I always like to ask people. Do you ever consider the idea of purpose? Do you think about it? Do you think that you were born to be an artist? How do you think purpose manifests in 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 your personality and in your work? Uh, to be honest, like uh, I don't know. I don't think I was born to be X or Y or Z. Z. Uh, I think uh, in this period of my life, I enjoy to do this. Like I feel like I can express something. I feel like most people enjoy what I do and like I enjoy too like because as I said earlier like I want to raise the bar at every render I do that's why like I don't publish uh, a lot of stuff compared to some other people who I have a lot of respect like DZ Viper makes one render per day like Beeple makes one render per day and Studzor makes one render per day like I, I can't do that like for me it's something that goes like beyond this thing basically I try to uh, think the concept I try to think about it for days and then I try to make it in to make it work and so um, for the moment I like to do this and maybe like in the next I don't know maybe in the next two years I will be making like some Peter Tarka looking works like minimal and such like I don't know you I, I can tell you this is like I don't see future so I cannot answer to like fully to your question I like that you like to keep your feet on the ground steadily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Like, I think uh, feeling humble, like never feeling like arrived, never feeling established, I think makes a difference when it comes to this stuff because I'm always humble. I always try to learn even from people that say 
uh, they are learning from me, right? I try to see like the way they learn and it can always be useful, like never to feel like arrogant or such. I, it's not my thing. It's not my thing. I, I like to hear this coming from a guy of 24 years old because, you know, like when I was 24, my head was in a total different place. And I see some of the younger guys today despite what society says that you guys are entitled and whatnot mm. i think that actually you guys are more present in the now than a lot of young people of my generation used to and maybe this is just my own biased opinion because of what i see younger artists do uh, but i'm very happy to hear you saying things like this um, because it makes me feel like you know what you're talking about and that you are on the stuff right now, right there, and that you're doing everything that you can to be the best version of yourself. Maybe yeah. maybe I'm overthinking. Um, no, but... no, I think I, I get what you mean. I, I totally get it. And yeah, you know, I think like, I try to think it more like of a person thingy, like, I don't think like people 20 years ago were like better or worse than people now. I just think like every person has a story, every person has a background. So maybe like uh, you call no a guy from today that's a very douchebag, but maybe because like he didn't have an education, maybe because he's just like that. Maybe his parents give him like the best education they could and he's still like that. I think just uh, it's just a person thingy like it's a it's it does it does matter just to the people the person you are and the people you hang with the people that like kind of shape you you know what i mean and yeah i i don't know i don't think it's based on which year you're born or which which place you have born in i think it's just uh the person you want to be if you want to be a good person i'm sure there are like a million ways to be a good person yeah that's it <laughs> okay dangerous let me I want to know, what does the Dungeons that doesn't work on the computer do in his free time? What does the uh, Dungeons on the day off like to do? Okay, uh, like a few years ago, I used to play like a lot of video games. Now I still play them, but not, not, at, not, not as often, sorry. Um, I still like to watch football. Uh, I love football. I'm an Inter Milan supporter. Um, and yeah, I get tattoos in my free time, as you can see. And yeah, I hang out with friends and such. Uh, yeah, I do normal things. Like uh, I'm a normal person. Uh, yeah, I do what you do, I think, out of your free time as well. Yeah. And what do you do in order to recharge your batteries from a creative point of view? What are the things that inspire you and that you try to do to sort of like keep your uh, creativity, uh, to keep the fire under your creativity, so to say? Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, like I, when I have like a creative burnout, like I try to uh, shut everything down. Like I don't open programs unless I have some work, some stuff to work on. Like um, then I, I've, I found myself always uh, being inspired after a travel, like even if a short uh, travel, like maybe one hour in train or something in a subway or in driving my car. And yeah, I found uh, traveling does a lot, maybe because you refresh your mind, you refresh your thoughts. And yeah, I find traveling works a lot for to like to fight creative burnouts. Dangerous. one more question. Yeah. You have almost 19,000 followers on Instagram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when did you start with your Instagram page? And because I know that it's not very long that you've done this. And how did you get to 19,000 followers? Uh, okay, so uh, take for granted, like, I don't think like 19,000 is a high number because, as I said, this stuff is stuff that everyone calls like. So maybe people just tend to click follow and that's it. So basically, my page started like in August uh, 2018, but like I posted only like uh, photo edits or 
um, photo manipulation stuff till like January of 2019. 19. So um, uh, till that moment, uh, I just posted stuff and I wasn't growing a lot. But now I remember like there are some couple of renders that basically uh, I used to post like the, basically the hashtags that belong to that render. You know, like if I make a cyberpunk render, I type uh, hashtag cyberpunk, you know. So then uh, some repost pages started following me, some stuff that like curators uh, that have like big pages, like 100k followers and stuff like that started reposting me. And then I think it's just uh, like a snowball, you know, like once you get it rolled one time, then it gets bigger and bigger and so on. So basically I try to make cool stuff and if people likes it, uh, it's automatic that people, uh, that your audience grows that. So I think it's just, uh, it's automatic. I don't think it's, uh, it's something you have to focus on. Like if you make cool stuff, uh, followers and likes come automatically. I don't think you have to focus on that only. Okay, that's that's a good, very good tip for anyone watching. Um, okay, one more question and then I'll let you go. We've been talking already for ah, no more problem. than 40 minutes. Um, no problems. If somebody that is thinking to start working in the field of 3D, um, they come to you to ask you for advice, what, which kind of advice would you give them? And it can be like a business advice, it can be artistic advice. Um, what would you tell them? Uh, I will tell them to like uh, follow a lot of basic tutorials, like actual basic, like stuff that explains stuff only on a theoretical plane, you know, like uh, not like uh, open this program, click this feature that does this, because otherwise you will not learn the program. You will just learn to be like an automatic robot that knows how to do stuff only because someone else tells told them that X features does X thing. I will suggest them to like learn uh, the basics like of, of lighting, like actual lighting, like in the photographs, uh, in the photography field and because it applies to 3D as well. So once you learn that, you'll be able to recreate lighting like both in real life and in 3D. So I think learning the basics of the stuff, uh, it's key for everybody, not just for those who starting. And yeah, I mean, then, as I said earlier, the programs comes by themselves. If you learn one feature in Blender, let's say, I'm sure then you know how to use it in cinema or in any other uh, program as well. I so heard that's uh, it. recently an interview with a photographer and the question that was asked to this photographer was, if I have only $1,000, which camera would you recommend me to buy? And the guy said, okay. you know, you can get a very cheap camera on eBay for 500 bucks. And then with the rest of the 500 bucks, you buy photography books because that's how yeah. you, you learn composition, light and everything. Yeah, and I so think it's a really good comparison. Like it's a really good uh, uh, an analog things. Like how can I say analogy? Yeah. yeah. Danjuts, I want to thank you for your time. I want to just ask uh, if somebody at home has any questions for you. This is the time to ask them. Otherwise, I would like for you guys to hit the like button if you enjoyed this interview. Subscribe if this is your first time here. I plan to make more videos in the future. Actually, I've been doing this for four years now. Uh, Danjus, is there anything that you want to say to those who are watching before we say goodbye? Uh, I think uh, it's an incredible pleasure for me. Like it's an incredible honor that you all um, use your time, spend your time to watch me and Fabio talking. It means you're interested in what I do, in what Fabio does. It's I'm insanely uh, flattered for this, and I want to thank you as well, Fabio, for this chance. Uh, uh, thank you, Dizzy. I'm reading that message right now, and nothing to say anymore. Like I'm really flattered. I I enjoy doing this thing, and I hope you enjoy it too. All right, let's give it another couple of seconds. Maybe people are uh, writing down yeah, yeah, the, no the, the questions. Uh, but anyway, you know, the, the thing about Fabian, the DZ Viper, is that he's such a nice guy. And it, it's, it's always very nice for me to find out that such talented people are also so nice and so 
uh, friendly and kind when you reach out to them to talk to them, you know? And so... Yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. Like, sadly, it's not the same for, like, everybody out there. Like, some people... I, like, I get it that, like, especially the most uh, famous and followed people, like, maybe cannot uh, use social media 24-7. Otherwise, they will go crazy and cannot answer to every DM. But, yeah, this Viper really stands out for his nice work and his ni in, in this being nice, a nice person. So Nitin is asking if uh, there are any learning resources that stand out that you would recommend. Uh, to be fair, I think uh, YouTube, like standard videos are more than enough to learn like the basics and the stuff. Then maybe, of, of course, if there is like a particular uh, subject, a particular thing that you want to learn, I'm sure there are both uh, free and like premium paid uh, tutorials, courses, and like you show uh, look up Skillshare and it's a website that has many courses and yeah, that's it basically. Danjuts, I don't think there are any more questions coming in. Guys, thanks a lot for everything. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for liking this video. Um, again, it okay. was a pleasure spending one hour together with you. Danjuts, don't go anywhere. I'm going to stop the the stream so that I can okay. say goodbye to you one more time. Uh, okay. Oh, no, Stefano is asking, which kind of RAM do you have in your PC? Okay, do you want to do very quickly a breakdown of the system that you use? And then this is the last question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not a problem. Your computer? I, uh, not a problem. I have uh, currently my setup is an Intel uh, i7-9700KF, uh, a CPU. Then I've got a RTX 2070 uh, Ti, uh, uh, sorry, 2070 Super, not Ti. And yeah, I've got a, uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. So those are the most uh, specs that stands out, most the best components that I've got. And it works fine. You don't have any issues with the uh, with the work that you do, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, probably when the new GPU, like the, the new Ampere will come out, I will buy them. Uh, but yeah, besides, for the moment, I'm pretty cool with it. Okay, good enough. I think that answered the question. Uh, don't go anywhere. I'm going to stop the, the stream so that I can say goodbye to you one more time, okay? Okay, okay, perfect. <laughs> Thanks a lot for doing this, man.